Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today we're going to continue with the Lighthouse, with Lighthouse Project, which by now we're, I believe this is a video number 15 of the series. So quite a big series. Um, we were talking about this one and, and I think it's uh, it's really good that we're doing this full series. It, it kind of looks like a, one of our premium courses, which is fine. I mean, you guys have uh, been supporting the channel for so long that I don't think uh, giving you guys uh, more content like this one is, is it's not a bad idea, right? Uh, but I also think it's good for people to go back and maybe like take their time and, and follow the whole process and, and try to do your own. I know that it, it's a little bit difficult to follow because it's a, it's a big project right now, uh, but I want to show you the, the best thing. So uh, big update here, you can see that I actually changed a lot of the stuff in here. Like I added the little stairs, the extra platform that we were missing, I built this like scaffolding over here. You can see the the, um, the repetition of textures. Here's a quick trick. Since I haven't done any freeze transformations just yet, I can grab like a couple of these guys and then just rotate them locally on, on Y and uh, and we're just gonna create like more variation. So if you start seeing like a, a certain pattern like repeating, just make sure to like rotate things around and, and that should break up the pattern slightly, right? So yeah, that, that creates a little bit more variation. So only if it's uh, visible. Now we already know that this texture is gonna look really nice once we add the tessellation and the, and the um, what's the word, the extrusion. Um, so today I wanna focus, uh, or the next part of this tutorial, I wanna focus on the doors because I think the doors are gonna be really, really, really good. So let me show you here, uh, wooden door medieval. This is the kind of stuff, like, like doors, where we can actually put a little bit more effort into because we're going to be using them quite a bit. So if you create one very nice looking door, then you're going to be able to repeat it several times and uh, and create something very nice. Uh, I think one of the best examples I can give you is Novigrath from The Witcher. So in, in The Witcher uh, video game, there is the city called Novigrath. And of course, if you take a look at this, you're not gonna model every single thing as an individual piece. You're gonna be doing kit, kits or kit bashing, and then you're just gonna duplicate the whole thing. So I wanna do this sort of like medieval door um, with the like the frame, because in the, in the concept here, we can see that there's the frame on the, on the door. Well, this one, it's kind of like right there, but we can do like a wooden frame. And then this door right here and this other door right here, they can be the exact same door. We can just like repeat it. So let's look for a very nice like old wooden door. I wanna do kind of like something like this, but one very good piece of advice that I can give you guys is always try to look for um, real photographs, like real reference, because there's a lot of great 3D artwork right uh, like out there, but sometimes 3D artists, including me, we will make mistakes or we will take certain shortcuts and you don't wanna copy those mistakes or those shortcuts into your own um, into your own work, right? So, so I'm gonna look for like a very nice, like rustic, like this is pretty, pretty straightforward, right? Like this is kind of what we wanna do. This one looks really good. This is 3D, I know, but it looks really good. Congratulations to whoever did that one. Um, let me look, uh, wooden door old. I'm gonna look for wooden door old. There we go. This is getting me a little bit closer to what I'm looking for. So yeah, I, I think something like this, this is something close to what we're looking for. Um, I might be even tempted to change the style because I can't really see the style of the door. Like I can see a couple of planks like going across the, the door, but I don't see a lot of information. So here's where we might take a couple of artistic liberties to create something a little bit more interesting. Um, and also, you know, to make sure that you guys learn new stuff. This one I really like, this sort of like style, but uh, let me see if we can find a nice reference here. And this is part of the job, huh? Sometimes, again, like I was mentioning at the end of the last video, um, even though I'm doing this like quite fast, I would say, um, in the job, you, you take your time and make sure things are done like super, super, super right. So yeah, I think we're gonna go for just like a simple door. I, I really like this ones that have like a, like a different like finish to it or, there we go. This ones look very cool. I think we're gonna do this style right here because I really like this like hinges, uh, but we're gonna do them as a different piece. So I'm gonna do it like the right way to do it. So I'm gonna save this image and we're of course gonna go to our our source images and let's call this old, old door. Now we jump onto Maya, let's save this file right here. Actually, I'm gonna say file increment and save to have a new version in case anything happens. Remember, always good to have that. Uh, let's save this. And we're gonna go uh, spacebar, Maya, and front view. And now that I say that, let me go back to our Karnak thing. There we go. So Karnak is the software that we use here to to show the key uh, the keystrokes. 
Uh, there we go. So, um, yeah, so front view, again, spacebar, click on Maya, and then front view, and then we're gonna go, uh, this is the shortcut for image planes, and we're just gonna get our old door. Now, we already know that we're doing real scale. A door is usually like two meters high. So I'm gonna add a cube, some doors are of course bigger, and I'm gonna change the scale of the cube to 200, and that's the height that the door should have. So I'm gonna bring this up, and grab my image plane and scale it up so that we match that nice little effect right there. There we go, perfect. On the perspective view, I'm just gonna push this guy back and we start modeling. And this doors are one of those things that are super, super simple to model. So let me show you first, let's do, actually, uh, see how the grid is like super, super tight? Like you might even see like a weird, like fragment look on your on your screen. Uh, that's that's one of the things that I don't like about Maya, that the grid is, is meant to be like super small because for some reason they think that you're going to work on a small scale when in reality you can, you can work on a real world scale. So we're going to go into uh, display, a grid, and the magic numbers that I use whenever I'm working in real scale is 100, 10, and 1, which is going to give you a very similar grid, but a lot more manageable as you can see here. So yeah, there we go. And the, as you can see, we have the frame. Very nice frame, and then we have the door. So let's start with the frame. Frame is super simple. We can do a very similar technique that uh, to what we did with the, with the window. So I'm gonna start with a big box right here, like this. I'm gonna grab both faces, extrude them, and offset. Actually, let me show you another technique. This is, I mean, super simple, but you can also go and create, I I've seen some people do it like this. You can create a, a pipe, and if you create a pipe and rotate it 90 degrees so that it's facing us, and you change the subdivision axis to four, you're pretty much gonna get like a rhomboid shape. Let me show you here. Let's bring the radius up. There we go, see that rhomboid shape? So the only thing you need to do is rotate this like 45 degrees. Let's increase the, increase the thickness. And it's pretty much like creating the, the, the pattern. So very similar uh, techniques, like pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty similar to be honest. Uh, the only difference is that one, we use like bridge and stuff and this one is, a little bit more straightforward. So uh, in this case, the thing that it will save me or uh, a little bit of the of the like the express things, if, if you wish, is that we're going to be able to let me go to the object. Scale, I'm going to press R and click to go into world scale. And then I'm going to select these vertices right here and just scale them at down. It's freeze transformations. And then these two things just go all the way down to the floor. There we go. And we have this. I am gonna make it a little bit thicker. So thicker on this side, there we go. And uh, we can do the same thing we did for the for the wood frames for the windows. Like we can split these edges over here and just um, fill them. So I'm gonna say edit mesh and then uh, detach. That's gonna detach them. And then I'm gonna say a mesh separate. So now each object is a separate object. I'm gonna grab all of the objects. I'm gonna say mesh fill hole. That's gonna fill the hole on all of the objects. And then I'm actually gonna grab uh, all of the objects and I'm gonna bevel them all at the same time. I'm gonna say, yeah, just one segment. And I'm gonna say a 0.2, uh, 0.2 fraction. So we have a little bit of a bevel, probably like a 0.1 to be honest, 0.1, there we go. So I'm gonna go here. This has to be done per object. So each object, we're gonna change the bevel to 0.1. There we go. And now we can grab them again and just combine them into a single piece. That way we're gonna have that little bit of the detail there, which is, again, gonna give us a nice little shadow, a nice little element. It's not a lot of extra polygons and we have a nice effect. If you want to save or optimize more, just leave it as a, the simple shape that we had before and that's perfectly fine. Now, uh, for the uh, for the actual uh, door itself, we need the wood plate planks. So I'm just gonna add like a, again, a cube, make it so that it looks like a plank and just push it all the way to the top. Let's do this here. There we go. And um, something like that. Now I do want to add a little bit of, uh, again, of bevel to the whole thing. So in this case, I'm going to bevel and I'm going to give it two segments so that we get like a little bit of rounder edges. That's going to that's gonna help with the, what we're going to be doing later on. And now it's just a matter of uh, duplicating and creating the, the plank. So I'm gonna move it here, Control D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D repeats the last action. And here's where I am actually gonna go and I'm gonna start moving. Some of the planks are gonna be slightly thicker and some of them are gonna be slightly smaller. However, 
before I do this, one really nice tip that I can give you guys is get the Juvie. So make sure you have your Juvie like properly laid out before doing this, and that's gonna save you so many problems. So I'm gonna grab this guy, UB, planar mapping, and then I'm gonna say a UB, 3D cut and so UB edges. I'm gonna go to this line back here. And if we jump into the UV, UV editor, and we grab all of this and hit control U to unfold, there we go. We can even hit control L. It's gonna lay them out, um, in this case, horizontally. Uh, and that's it. So now we have uh, UV is ready and it's gonna be a little bit easier to just go control D. But let's make like a, like a broad one and then control D. Let's make a small one, like a thin one. And then control D, same size, control D. Let's make it like a very thin one, control D, and then like a really thick one, not super thick, of course, but just thicker. Again, this is just to add a little bit of variation to the whole thing. There we go. Perfect. So we have this, and I know that when we bake, like the ambient occlusion and everything, we're going to get a nice effect. The only thing, of course, is we need to grab all of this, guys. And we need to give each one of them their own UV. So control U to everyone and then control L. Control L. And as you can see, each plank will have its own texture. This, of course, is going to reduce the texture resolution. But since this is just one asset, I think we can afford like a 2K or even a 4K map. And as long as we reuse it several times, the whole asset's going to look uh, very nice. So this is, yeah, just the, the basic construction of the, of the door here. Now, um, here's, here's something a little bit more advanced for those of you that are into game development. Um, if you're going to be bringing this into your engine, you of course want all of these elements to be combined into a single geometry because you want to be able to rotate them. You could create a rig inside of Maya and then skin it and rig it and stuff, but usually you're going you're gonna to want to rotate this in-game. However, as you can see here, the pivot point of the object is not where I want it to be. I want it to be on one of the sides. This is super important. You're going to actually move this whole thing to the side so that the pivot point of the door itself, not the door frame, the door itself, sits right on the world origin, or as close to the world origin as possible. So for instance here, I think we still need to, let me, let me I'm gonna grab the pivot point for both of them, and I'm gonna snap them to the grid, there we go. So, so this one is already in the grid, but the other one's not, so let me just let me move this slightly, there we go, I think that should be fine. Because now, when I rotate this guy, let's go to the front view. And I'm going to move the pivot point to the to the origin. That's where, from where the door is going to rotate. So eventually, if I were to like program or script this thing so that it rotates, this is the kind of rotation that I would get. There's a little bit of overlap there, but it's fine. And as you can see, this rotates like how I would expect a door to rotate. For me, it was very counterintuitive when I first learned this because I've been, I've been taught all the time to do things symmetrically. But especially for like rotations and things, when you go into games, it's very important that the origin is, is located where, where you want to rotate things around. Otherwise, you're going to have to offset the pivot point on the engine and it gets a little bit more complicated. So uh, I've been using Unreal for a couple of years now. And the most of the objects that I need to do this, I, I follow this technique where I would uh, make sure that the pivot point of the object is right here in case I want to create like a little bit of a transition. We're not going to be opening our door. In, in our case, that would be a little bit too much, I think, for this project. Um, but yeah, so, so that's it. So as you can see, uh, actually the, the hinges of the door are, are on the outside of the door frame. So that means that I actually need to bring this thing like forward, which I'm not gonna do. I'm actually gonna bring this thing backwards like this so that the hinge, when I open the door, in this case, it goes to the other side. However, these hinges are on the outside and to be safe, you would like to keep the hinges on the inside. So I think it's gonna be the other way around. I'm gonna move this thing forward like this and the hinges would actually be like back here. Um, but I am gonna add like a decoration here to to indicate that the hinges are like on the other side, something, right? Because usually the hinges of a door should be on the inside because otherwise someone can just break them and open the door. Um, sometimes those, those are the little details that people don't actually like look uh, at on, on video games, but it is something like, technically the hinges of a door should be on the inside so that they're not uh, easily destroyed. Anyway, so let's add the, the boards. And I do remember that in the concept, I don't have the concept right now, we did have like a cross board here. So let's just recycle one of these guys. So I'm just gonna grab one plank here, since we already have UVs. And I'm gonna say mesh, edit mesh, duplicate. And this is kind of like, it's gonna extract the object. So now there's another object in there. 
you can see that's the that's the plank so that one right there center the pivot point and let's po uh, position it how we want it so it's going to be that's uh, one like support over there I'm going to change the scale to object mode so that we can scale it uh, based on the object. We can even change the, the movement to object mode. And here's the very important part. Like, I definitely want this thing to be, like, exactly online or in line with the, with the rest of the elements, right? So I'm going to move this thing and move this thing so that we get, like, a super, super precise um, union here. So this one over there and this one over there. There we go. Now I can just duplicate this, move this to the top. Technically, we should be able to rotate it. And just have like a like a straight one over here. So let's go front view again. Grab this vertex right here. And this one's right here, and this one's down here. There we go. Just a simple transformation of the element. And I actually want to add like another like small one over here, just to give it some variation. Now, another thing I want to do is I'm actually going to go to this planks right here. I'm going to go into vertex mode and I want to grab like, I'm going to grab like this face right here, this one right here. I'm going to press a B, which is soft selection. You guys remember soft selection. Uh, and right now, if I double click uh, my movement option for soft selection, you're going to see that I have this set to surface, not volume. Volume will move everything. So we'll do this sort of thing. I don't want to, that, I, I don't want to do that. I want to do surface so that we only move the ones that are like on one area. And as you can see, what I want to do here is add a little bit of variation to the to the woods. Maybe they were not like completely, completely perfect. So that will add a little bit of variation to the whole thing. And I think that's gonna it's gonna make it look very, very nice. There we go. Look at that. So simple things like that. Even with the planks here, like one thing we can do is we can just like move them like slightly forward and slightly backwards. And, and that kind of stuff will give a, a different sort of, sort of like perception to the whole thing. Eventually, the ambient occlusion is going to be like darker in certain areas, and that's going to be really, really good for us. Um, even though we're not seeing the back of the door, it is a good idea to to have like the same planks on the other side. I, I'm not going to do it right now because we're going to be wasting texture space, and, and I want the, the, the element to look very nice. Uh, but you should keep that in mind. If your door is going to be like opening and closing, you definitely want to have... Uh, the same amount of detail on the other on the other side so yeah that's that's it now let's do the hinges and the hinges are a little bit fancy you can see here that we have some very fancy hinges and again uh, uh, from a from a realistic perspective or from a realistic point of view you want this hinges to be on the inside so that when you open the door the hinge is protected on the other side however in this case since we want to make it look cool we might argue that it might look better if the hinges are outside. However, you would need to open the door uh, towards you, right? So it's, it's, again, those kind of decisions that you need to make. So let's build them. Super easy. I'm just going gonna, gonna to start with a cube. Let's bring the cube to the hinge right here. Right about there. I'm going to grab this face on this side, like on uh, the, the one that I'm not seeing. I'm selecting it with a, with a selection a square, and then just I'm going to extrude this and then do another extrusion. There we go. This is, of course, not going to be super thick, so let's make it thinner. And let's do this like sort of round stuff over here. So one quick way to do it, I'm going to grab these three faces, or actually these two faces, Control E. I'm going to extrude out to create like the like the shape of the element, because I know when I smooth this out, we're going to get a, a nicer shape. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, we can bevel. Can we bevel? I don't know. It looks weird. So let me. I'm gonna keep it like this, and I'm gonna use an insert edge loop to insert an edge loop right here to keep it like sharp, and then one over here, and one over here. That's gonna give me this sort of effect. That looks nice. I'm gonna say mesh and smooth, and I only use those edges, like those support edges, to to get that, like to get this shape right here, which is a relatively nice looking shape. And now I'm gonna grab like. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. And then with the V again, with soft selection, I'm gonna press B and middle mouse click to create like a small a radius. And we can give it this sort of like effect, right? Something like that I think looks looks nice. Now, if we don't want this to be as sharp, we can grab, let's get rid of soft selection. We can grab it like these two points, just push them out. It's gonna soften it up a little bit. Um, 
we have these things going up but since we're not gonna see them i'm not sure if we want to if i want to add them to be honest i do want to add like this this things right here so i'm gonna i'm gonna focus on this other ones so i'm gonna grab all of these faces scale them so they're completely flat extrude them bring them here there we go and now i'm gonna grab like one two three one two three and let's extrude and create those like little lines right here so this one's gonna this vertices we're gonna move them over here and this one's over here and then we're gonna select one two three one two three control e again front view and this uh, this one's gonna create this sort of like shape over here There we go. So we we kind of mark this thing right there. I think it looks okay. Let's give it a little bit more life. So I'm thinking about like maybe like creating a little bit of a like a small line over there. Now remember, we we don't have a uh, smooth mode in, inside of games. So so we do need to care take care of the of the resolution. I'm gonna say mesh display, soften edge, and this is what we would probably see in games. So see. Not looking quite super tight, right? I don't think this is gonna work, guys. Mm, not liking it. I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna keep it simple. I mean, we could do the the thing, but there's other important things that I want to show you with the project. So, so I think we're gonna just gonna keep it simple. So, I'm just gonna go with like a traditional square. I am gonna use the size as a, as a sort of like reference. So, right about there. Let me know in the comments if you guys want me to do this like properly. I'll do it, but it's gonna take. A couple, like another 30 minute or 40 minute video. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to do it. Just just let me know in the comments and, and we'll do it. Uh, but now, as I mentioned, we're gonna we're gonna keep it simple. So I'm just gonna do like a like a straight line here. Let's add a line in the middle. Create like this little like triangular shape. Grab all of the all of the outer edges, edges by one. Again, super simple, super traditional sort of like a hinge thing. I'm going to actually delete the back part because we, we don't need it. And now we just uh, position it on the door. So again, technically the hinges are on the other side, but this will give me a little bit of a, of a nice effect here. Now, do I need to create like the little bolts? No, we can do that with hide map inside of substance. I'll show you in the next video once we jump into, into texturing. So that's going to be one. It's going to be two. And then we'll have a third one over here. As you can see, it's kind of being like overridden by the other plank. That's fine. Let's just put the plank on top, kind of like a like an afterthought or something. And that's it. So let's do the UVs real quick. I think we're we're good on time right now. So all of these planks already have their UVs, so I'm not worried about those ones. This one's super easy. We just need to say UV planar mapping from the C axis. So we can like take a picture of them over there. It's combining into a single object. Let's go to UV, UV editor, control U, and that's it. No, nothing else. And this one's again, super easy. So I'm just gonna say UV, um, planar mapping, camera-based projection. We're gonna use our, our little trick here. And uh, now it's just a matter of sensors are, they're kind of like cylinders. So I'm gonna go UV, 3D cut, and that's like cap, 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 cap. Cap, cap, and on the other side, we're gonna do across and across. I've seen some people suggest doing like automat automatic mapping when you're doing this sort of texture because everything's gonna be solved inside of uh, substance and whatnot. I, I've been doing UVs for 10 years and having proper UVs is always better than having like, like lazy and automatic UVs. So if you can learn the proper way to do UVs, that's very good for you. So control L, control uh, again, control U, and then control L, control L, there we go. And now we have everything in here. So as you can see, it is a good proportion. Everything is, is right there, but we do have a lot of wasted space. So the reason why we have wasted space is due to the size of the elements. We could cut more stuff. Wait a second. Oh, you know what, what I, I missed? Make sure you freeze transformation first and then you control U and control L. There we go. So yeah, there's a lot of wasted space. So what I would suggest whenever you have this is try to leave, like in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna help Maya, like place all of my objects in this case closer to the element. 
Why? Because I might not use this specific, um, what's the word, this specific UV for anything else, making this one smaller, but just having the extra space in here, like clean space, will be a good idea if later on I want to I wanna place something else in here. So maybe we can use this space to add like, a, like there's a lamp or maybe like a doorknob. Actually, we're missing the doorknob, right? Yeah, we're missing the doorknob. So let's do the doorknob and we can have the doorknob over here. So for the doorknob, I think, again, I'm just going to keep it really simple. So I'm just going to do a torus. The doorknob would be like over here. Let's rotate this 90 degrees. There we go. A little bit bigger and a radius a little bit bigger as well. Section radius. Yeah, let's do a, a big, big torus. Oop, there we go. It's going to be right about there, sitting a little bit on top. Here's another cool trick for you guys. So I'm going to grab this guy's right here. And again, edit mesh, duplicate. That's going to give me a duplicate over there. And I'm going to extrude this guy to create like the support thing. There we go. Just like that. I mean, we can bevel this, like the outer edges. Just have a nicer, a little bit of a nicer look. Yeah, look, pretty cool, right? And then usually this thing is mounted like on a, on a square. So I'm just going to grab one of these planks. And just create like a square here. Which is the thing that this thing is going to be like welded on top of, right? There we go. So this one has UVs. So I, just, I just need to freeze the transformation. The torus by default has UVs. And this one, since it was a duplicate from a torus, it actually will have some sort of UVs. Let me see if it works. It doesn't work. Almost works. Just need to grab this guy right here. UV. Cut UV edges, control U again, and there we go. That that works nicely. So again, just grab everything here, control or sorry, uh, freeze transformation, go back into UV mode. And I'm not gonna make the mistake because this could be a mistake. I'm not gonna be them. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna make the mistake of trying to unfold this again because if I unfold this, I'm gonna get the exact same sort of uh, effect where everything in the woods is gonna get like cramped up. And then the doorknob is going to be like really, really tiny. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy, this guy, and this guy. And this guy, so I'm going to control U to unfold and control L to layout to get a nice layout. Then I'm going to make them smaller, place them over here, grab everything over here. And then since we have enough space, we can actually afford to have a little bit more resolution on this guys. And you're going to see that they're going to be a little bit higher resolution, which I don't think is a bad idea because this is the thing that the player might be looking at. So having a little bit of extra resolution there might be good. We are going to get a little bit of uh, discrepancy in, in quality, right? Because this guy's, this guy's going to be a little bit higher texture than the rest of the, of the wood planks. But again, I think it's a, it's a little price that we can pay and, and it's not going to look worse. When you have different amounts of like texture resolutions, the problem is when something looks worse compared to the other thing. So in this case, if the wood looks good enough and then the handle looks even better, that's good. Rather than having the, the handle look good and then the wood looking bad. Hopefully you, you understand what I mean trying to explain that with my bad English. So yeah, uh, this is it. This is our, our door. It, it looks looking nice. I think it's, uh, it's going to bake very, very nicely. And uh, we're ready to jump into Substance Painter to do some textures. So that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you back on the next one. We're just going to keep going, like one after the other. Remember, uh, today this video should be Thursday. So uh, make sure to check down here in the link if you're submitting for this weekend's portfolio review. You can drop a folder with a link to your art station or your uh, works, like the actual works, the actual files. So you're free to do so. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, you know, check out our premium courses, all the deal. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.